All right, so when I was down here um, in Zephyr Hills, yeah. um, I wanted to, to bring uh, some, some engineering things to your attention about these, these rotors. And Abbott is actually an engineer. So while we have an engineer here to talk to you, <laughs> I think I'll let him explain some of the science behind uh, how, how rotor blades create lift and the oscillations that they do. So I'm gonna have him jump on here and explain the science behind that. Okay. So Ryan, everybody is always kind of confused or not clear about what's going on. And I'm coming from an airplane and trikes background, so I actually fly all three, three categories, uh, gyroplanes, trikes, airplanes, and fortunately I've designed and manufactured all three of them as well. So it's actually very simple. The gyroplanes that we are looking at here, uh, which are very simple gyroplanes, which don't have uh, rotor blades that can adjust pitch. It's actually the simplest implementation of a rotor, rotary aircraft there is. So nothing complicated about it. There's no mystery here. It's very simple. Um, the rotor blades, of course, are wings, right? They are creating lift. They are wings. And you can see this is a NACA 8H12 airfoil. We buy these rotors from Averso Aviation in France. They have a very good record of production. No problems, 1,500 plus units over 14 years. Um, anyway, if you notice, there's a little bit of reflex here because in the rotor blades, we want an airfoil that has very little pitching moment, what we in uh, aerodynamics will call pitching moment, like airplanes have air, uh, wings that have a good pitching moment and you need a tail to balance that and uh, uh, designers set that up. But in general planes we have this reflex airfoil and a very low pitching moment airfoil generally. And it's just like an airfoil and just like a wing and that's how it produces lift as it moves through the air. It's just moving through the air in a rotary mesh, motion meaning it's just circulating and that's why it's producing lift that way and you just are not moving forward, straight forward, and your airspeed is not directly related to how the lift is being produced. Lift is being produced because there's a rotary motion, or rotation motion, and hence the rotary wing. Now, what happens is, where the people are confused is, hey, what happens, what is this dissymmetry of lift? I get asked a lot, dissymmetry of lift. What is that? They're confused about it. Okay, very simple. Let's say we take a blade element right here at the tip, right? This is a 28.4 inch rotor. I take the last, you know, a 28 foot rotor, I take the last bit right here, right? And let's consider their blade element. Uh, one rotor RPM is equal to roughly one mile an hour at 28 foot station. So your wing is moving at 340 rotor RPM, which is your normal rotor RPM up in the air, let's say 350. So the wing is moving at 350 miles an hour at this station right here, right? So the wing is producing a lot of lift out here. But then you're moving forward at 60 miles an hour because your pusher propeller is pushing you and also or you're coming down because of gravity. So you have a forward uh, airspeed, but you also, your rotor, your wing has an airspeed of 350. So the wing is rotating this way like that. So you're gonna have a forward going wing, right right here, coming this way, advancing blade, and you're gonna have a retreating blade at the back side, similarly on the other side. So if you're moving at 50, and you were, your blade element is at 350, you're gonna add that, right? So 350 plus 50, 400 miles an hour is here. Produces a lot of lift at 400 miles an hour. But the retreating blade is going that way, away from the relative wind. So it's gonna take 350 on the other end and subtract it, so it will be at 300. So you got a 400 mile an hour wing station on the tip there, and you got a 300 mile an hour wing station on the other side. Obviously that's unequal lift, and that's what we call dissymmetry of lift in rotary wing aircraft. And you're like, oh wow, what will happen? Well, of course, the advancing side will lift up, and you will just turn left, and you, you can't stop it if that was allowed to remain. We know we can't change the airspeed. It's an auto-rotation, so it's always auto-rotating. 
uh, because there's loading underneath it. So if it's auto-rotating and the air is going from underneath it and through it, it's just going to keep auto-rotating. We, can, we don't, don't have any control over that. Uh, so what we do have control over or what we can adjust by a mechanism is angle of attack, right? We know if we lower the angle of attack, this 400 mile an hour wing station will produce less lift. And we know the 300 mile an hour wing station on the other side, if we increase its angle of attack, it's gonna create more lift. If we mess around with it and get it right, what will happen is we will have equal lift and get rid of the dissymmetry of lift. And that's done by this thing right here. This is teetering, right? Teetering, your old kids, you know, teeter, totter, that's basically what we have here, is the simplest implementation of a flapping hinge, which is allowing you to flap up and down. So what happens is when this blade, the advancing blade comes here, it goes upwards, flaps upwards like this. That decreases, not increase, that decreases its angle of attack because the relative wind is also coming from, the, from above now a little bit, whereas the retreating blade flaps down. Similarly, as this flaps up, the retreating blade is going down. That increases its angle of attack on that side, on the retreating side. And that difference of lift goes away because we are messing with the angle of attack. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Aviation Youth Magazine at AviationUSA.com. The Aviators Clinic at AviatorsClinic.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. And you don't have to do anything for that, right? You basically are just flying. This flapping is happening naturally because of the seesaw. Nature takes care of it. It's a central flapping hinge on a semi-rigid rotor. So the rotor blades are connected in a rigid manner. And you basically have flapping seesaw right there. And it takes care of all of that for you. End of story. So there is no dissymmetry of lift if you're operating in normal conditions. Now there is something called retreating blade stall. And you will hear of gyroplane accidents where somebody is taking off and they have chopped their tail. If that happened and they were on the ground roll and they did that, it's almost no mystery. They, what we call, they did a blade sailing or they flapped the rotor or they did a retreating blade stall because their forward going speed was too much for the given rotor RPM. So as they were building, building the rotor speed, they went too fast, too accelerating too fast Basically, they did an airplane takeoff, which is like neutral stick, flat disc, and they move forward. You have to put the stick all the way back to move forward. If you don't do that, you flatten the disc and you start to move forward. You'll accelerate very quickly in your airspeed, but your rotor speed will decay because it's not catching the wind. So it will not increase, it will decay. And there comes a point in which the, this flapping seesaw action, it's trying to equalize the lift and it's gonna say, okay, the retreating blade is gonna say, okay, I'm gonna keep increasing my angle of attack, I'm gonna keep increasing my angle of attack and eventually I'm gonna stall. And it stalls on the backside, it goes into a sinusoidal form like that and it chops your tail. Many times people will also flip over to one side and that's pretty much a dead giveaway that they had a retreating blade stall because they were taking it off like an airplane. Instead of putting the stick all the way back, which is like a soft field takeoff in an airplane, that's what you have to do in a gyroplane. So, this is Abed at Silverlight Aviation. I hope this gave you some basic explanation on how the rotary wing aircraft works, uh, how gyroplanes in auto rotation work, uh, and that's it.